Hey guys, Zach here again, TSS Garage, Total Shop Solutions Training Academy. Today in the shop, I want to take a look at some of the balancer tooling, pin plates, collets, some of the more precision pieces that uh, are available to us, help us up our game in turning out a better product, better result when it comes to some of the challenges we face with, with balancing more modern stuff. So just a quick tech on balancer theory. Balancers measure force, not weight. And this is one of the key reasons users often struggle with chasing weight or questioning their results. This is largely due to inaccuracies we experience during the mounting process. So let's talk about why that is and what's available to us to help tighten up those tolerances. The best way to duplicate the mounting process of the assembly on the vehicle is to make sure that we're identifying whether it's hub centric, lug centric, or if it's okay to use a cone, such as a, maybe a steel wheel, trailer tire, a, a spare tire, something of that sort. Steel cones have a very high taper to them, and that's okay on a steel wheel because they're broached. And so those two angles can mesh and ramp slowly. But that high taper leads to a very slow ramp up speed. So that's not ideal when you're dealing with an alloy wheel or a hub-centric design wheel, HD truck, three-quarter ton truck, something of that sort, that's very heavy and you have a short ramp up time. In those instances, you're gonna wanna use something that more closely emulates the hub piloting, which a collet does. It's a much flatter, much more quicker ramp up speed. And in a heavy assembly, like a three-quarter ton wheel that we're gonna play with here in a little bit, you may actually also wanna use a pin plate so that you're getting the most ideal coupling possible and quick ramp up speed to center. In any case, if we're not getting the assembly centered as closely as possible on the balancer like we are on the vehicle, we're not gonna be able to duplicate those results. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're not balancing the assembly. What it means is we're not balancing it on the same rotational axis as it is while it's on the vehicle. So that's where some of the confusion comes in. So let's, um, let's go ahead and dive into what accessories are available for us uh, at, at kind of a general service level. Let's do a quick demonstration on what some of that looks like. So some of the accessories that'll be available to you, which are also uh, can be easily found on our wheel balancer accessory catalog on the website. One is gonna be speed plates. Speed plates make it incredibly easy for a user to find a variable lug pattern. You know, if I had this RAM example, eight on six, five, I can just quickly identify what that lug pattern is, match my lug stud bores, and these are interchangeable tips. They even go as far as to put a spring washer in here to take care of, you know, metal shavings left in the lug stud bores, things like that, that we didn't, that we didn't take the time to clean out. So they're very thoughtfully engineered. It's just a really good piece to have. These are available in both a threaded shaft and a power clamp style accessory. They will come with different tips. So we can use a ball tip, conical tip, long studs, short studs. And then the stand, obviously, the stand itself just cleans things up. Been in shops a long time, a lot of years. You know what happens to this stuff when we don't use it every day or it gets pushed off in the corner. It's out of sight, out of mind, or it just gets scattered all over the place. Keep it front and center, and if it's easy to use, it's a, it's a really easy way to up our game in terms of precision. One thing that's gonna come with the kit is gonna be a spacer disc for your larger bore stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this three quarter ton 2022 Ram wheel here as an example shortly, because it, it is a challenging piece, not only because of its weight, but because it has this integrated hub face. So we wanna show you what using ideal tooling looks like on something like that and how it can help you if that's a challenge that you have. Let's go ahead and take a look at the collets next. The nine piece collet set is a, is a pretty global coverage. It's double sided, so you have 18 ranges. I'm starting out somewhere in the, in the 50 millimeter diameter range. And that's a great way to emulate, again, that hub centric taper for a wide variety of vehicles that you might be servicing uh, versus using, you know, four or seven cones that have a very steep taper. It's just a, a much more precise way. The next benefit to using a collet, I'm gonna actually show you up close on this cutaway wheel over here. That is their shallow nature. So let's check that out real quick. So in this cutaway wheel example, I can show you exactly how a shallow nature of the collet helps. So as you can see here in this bonded plastic clad wheel, we have the hub centric flange, which is normally where this will ride or center up on the vehicle itself. 
But notice how shallow the collet is, which is not allowing any penetration down here into this plastic cladding that wraps around the face of the wheel where the hubcap normally rides. If we were using a cone and we were protruding in here too far, we would be contacting that leading to possibly damage to the wheel itself, um, a comeback situation from rattles or, or what have you, but also wildly inaccurate piloting of the wheel because we're never gonna find center. So now we've talked about a little bit of the accessories that are available. Why don't we go ahead and move into a demonstration? I'm gonna use this light truck accessory kit that's new and available to us in order to get a good centering up on that wheel and tire assembly. And we're gonna show you how that all works. So again, we're gonna use this 2022 Ram heavy duty wheel and tire assembly as an example here. These could be a little bit tricky to balance, not only because they're really big and heavy, but because they have this integrated hub face that accepts the um, hub cap. And this is not actually where the wheel is machined to center. These wheels are all hub centric and also lug centric. So you're gonna wanna use a pin plate and something that's gonna emulate the hub face or hub flange taper on the vehicle itself. So again, on, the, on that heavier light truck kit that we offer, you're gonna end up with a double-sided collet that has the OE specific diameter hub bore already on it. And so that's gonna fit in there perfectly, just like you would when you put it on the vehicle. The second piece of this equation is going to be to use an ideal pin plate. This pin plate's already been set up as a four on six five, which is gonna match the eight on six five lug stud bore. And that's exactly what we need. So let's get this uh, all tooled up here on the balancer, show you what it looks like. First thing we're gonna wanna do is take our spacer ring and match it to the appropriate size or close to the backing plate there's two diameters there. You'll want the one you wanna use facing out. This just snaps in place like so. We'll take our tooling shaft spacer, insert that, and then we'll use, again, from our kit, an OE specific collet. There's gonna be two of these double-sided Ford, Chevy, Ram, single and dual rear wheel applications. And it's gonna go on next. We'll grab our wheel and get her on there. And with the power clamp, it's super easy. So we're all loaded up now, ready to go. Since we're working with a B800P, all we have to do is select the assembly that we're using, light truck in this case, and close the hood. After we get our initial results, we'll go ahead and continue. Machine stops on the outer plane, and as you can see, it's nicely backlit. It's also selected our spot to apply our weight using the laser. We're looking at an ounce and a half and, and two ounces on the inside plane. Fairly typical for something of this size. We're gonna go ahead and apply those weights now and do a check spin. We've done all of our weight application. You can see here our outer planes are at zero, which is great, but you'll notice there's still a half ounce of weight statically that we haven't dealt with. This is one of the things that we often miss when diagnosing really any wheel and tire assembly is this is called residual static imbalance. And why we might've taken care of the shimmy in this assembly, which we're probably not gonna feel on this truck anyways, we haven't taken care of all of this up and down, which is the harmonic we're gonna feel in our seat, seeing our mirrors jiggling. And so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna address that on its own. So I'm simply gonna touch the weight plane and you're gonna see laser light up right in the center, asking for a half ounce of weight to take care of that residual static imbalance. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. I'll do one more check spin. And if we've taken care of that, we're ready to move on 
the rest of our assembly or we're done. As you can see, we got zeros. I can go back to my all readings or dynamic screen. I can even click on the fine or residual round off and notice that I'm, I'm only looking at 15 hundredths. Never gonna see that in this heavy of assembly. This thing's done. Let's go ahead and switch gears a little bit and show you what happens when we mount this assembly up not using the ideal tooling. For that, I'm gonna use a business card. Business card represents about 30 thousandths in dimension. I'm simply going to insert this into the backing plate of the wheel, showing that we've clamped the wheel and we've still found center because we're using the appropriate tooling, but we're going to induce a lot of lateral change. What does that look like? A little bit of a thought experiment. Let's see what happens when we try again. You might notice the wheel looks a little wobbly at only 30 thousandths change. We just balanced this wheel, right? Hey, look, we're almost back exactly where we started. Ounce and a half, two ounces. It's like we did nothing. Let's see what happens if we take that business card back out of there. This is why using a cone or something that doesn't find center every time, it's not repeatable because you're susceptible to just a few thousands change down there. And a few thousands change down here at your hub flange can represent a lot of change up here at the weight planes. If you notice those numbers were only half ounce out static, that's because we didn't change the circle at which this is riding, but we changed its lateral dimension. And that's why you had so much more shimmy induced. Those types of errors though, lead to people questioning the results. Just a thought experiment to help see what's really going on, what's at play. We've taken that 30 thousandths worth of air back out. We've coupled it just like we did in the beginning. And in theory, it's balanced. Let's see what we get. Zeros again. We're good. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you found useful the information provided today, especially in talking about the precision tooling and the speed plates, the thought experiment here with the heavier duty truck wheel and tire assembly and the dimensional changes and how that might tie you up. We wanna be a resource for you. We understand that performing critical tasks today requires precision equipment. Don't hesitate to reach out to us, drop us a line here at the training center, as well as you can reach out to your equipment sales representative directly. His information will be findable as well on the website. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one.